Hello friends, I'm Frederick Mulder. I live in Winchester. Many people are dying. It is serious. I just read almost 400 people in the UK die today. And maybe for some skeptics and agnostics, for the first time in their lives, they are really thinking seriously about their mortality. I want to have a conversation today with the likes of Boris Johnson, uh, people who went to Eton, people who got a public education, who went to schools where they heard a particular kind of science and religion. Uh, and then I want to, you know, give you a, a couple of books and things to think about and really invite you to in this time really think about your life. Let me start like this. Boris Johnson went to Eton. I got this book a couple of years ago. 42 Old Etonians reflect on their time there. Remarkable stories in here. One of the scholars who went to Eton uh, reflected on the chapel services they had. And he said there were two foundations at Eton. Science, the, the search, the quest for truth and religion, Christianity. And then he narrates in this book of his how the Christian dogma in a particular mold was presented day after day, uh, Latin prayers stand and sit, very ritualized, very, very formalistic. And then he contrasted that with a science and the quest for truth, Homer, the Iliad, Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, where they read in the original Greek and how they were pushed and pushed to do their best, to be excellent, to be confident. And you have that tension at Eton playing off over several decades. And some time ago, when some scholars like this one, Michael Golder was there, he eventually came to the point where he had to choose between religion and, and science, and he chose science. He became an atheist in the end. But what I also discovered was that he was only exposed to a particular kind of religion. And uh, he, he notes when he went to Cambridge uh, for university, he was invited to go to the student union, kick you as it was called, and there he said, he heard for the first time in his life a sermon which was a great shock to him. And this is what he said. It was the first time that I had encountered Christianity as a religion of salvation. He's been five years at Eton and never heard the gospel of salvation. And then he said it was very different from the pallid gospel of Eton. My friends, if you've been to Eton, and you've never heard the gospel of salvation, I want to invite you to go read the gospels. Go start with the gospel of Mark and go read about this Jesus of Nazareth who lived in the dusty roads of Palestine, who was a real person who died on the cross. We have historical evidence outside of the Gospels. We have Josephus, we have Tacitus, we have Pliny. We have a number of things that you can read outside of Scripture that confirm that he was crucified. Now, I want to also talk to the Boris Johnsons who are skeptics and say, been there, done that, we know everything about Christianity. I want to suggest that you don't. The past 20, 30 years in particular, Lots of new, fresh, groundbreaking research has been published. Let me give you just a little flavor. Yeah, yeah, just a couple I've got. At the very top, Professor Marcus Bockmill from Oxford. All the Gnostic Gospels you can imagine, Da Vinci Code, all those stuff discussed in detail in this book. Uh, C.S. Lewis, this one written by Alistair McGrath, who used to be an atheist from Northern Ireland. He came to Oxford, he became a Christian, and he published some uh, new letters from C.S. Lewis in here. Uh, N.T. Wright, uh, Oxford PhD in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. This book on the resurrection, more than 800 pages of groundbreaking research. Craig Brom Blomberg, American, he grew up in a skeptical setting and he became a Christian later on, came to Aberdeen and did his um, PhD on the historicity of the Gospels. Um, Richard Borkham, he looks at eyewitness testimony, he looks at uh, uh, Auschwitz and memory, how people can remember over 30, 40, 50 years after events very accurately and he applies it to the Gospels. And here are a couple of volumes from Alistair McGraw I'm thinking of. Um, 
And of course, Boris, we know that people like Richard Dawkins will just say it's all nonsense and rubbish. Uh, but there is a growing group of even secular scholars who acknowledge this historical work that has been done over the past 30, 40 years. Boris, I want to challenge you um, kindly with respect in this time of crisis to go and rethink the Gospels of Jesus Christ. And I want to invite you to go read them afresh, uh, maybe again for the first time in decades. Uh, and I want to finish like this. You've written this very interesting book on, on, um, on Churchill. I want to finish with a quite an unorthodox story today. Churchill was, as you know, in a concentration camp, camp in South Africa, and he wrote, a, as you will know, also a journal. And then the section there he talks about the Boers, uh, he discusses one of those days, I think it was 1899, where he heard the Boers singing psalms at night. And when he heard them sing psalms, something happened in his heart. He realized there was something wrong about the British Empire, about the war. And he got out, as you know, quite famously and was a hero when he came back to England. But what I want to share with you is some of those Boers were caught by the British then when the British, uh, you know, won the war. And they were put in, as you will also know, concentration camps, St. Helena Bay. Uh, also in India, there were a, a number of camps, Sri Lanka as well. And what happened? Some Scottish Presbyterian pastors who were imported into South Africa by Lord Somerset and others, they went to some of these Boer concentration camps to preach the gospel to some of those Boers. They did it in Afrikaans, by the way, not in English. After the war, more than 100 of those Boers did not go back to rebuild their farm. My granddad's father, uh, he went back to his farm. It was also destroyed. The cows were killed. Uh, but those Boers who converts it, who accepted a Jesus that offers salvation, preached by these Scottish Presbyterian pastors, they went and planted mission stations in Malawi, in Zimbabwe, and in the north of South Africa. They decided not to go and rebuild another empire in South Africa. They decided to join the empire of Jesus Christ to go and build mission stations, hospitals, schools. And one of your buddies, Matthew Paris, who you will know, who used to be an MP, who became an atheist, um, I saw him a couple of years ago in Cambridge and gave him a lift to the train station. He was late for a, for a train. And I told him the story uh, of how my parents are running a mission station in the north of South Africa. And this was following a remarkable article that he wrote of visiting for Water Aid, the charity Malawi, where he saw what these mission stations did. He said that those uh, people on the mission stations were different. They had a different posture. The way they lived was ethical. They looked you with confidence in the eye. And he, Matthew Paris, traced it back to someone like this, Martin Luther. That there is a connection with God. There is a worldview, an understanding of the cosmos where people have a direct relation with God, where you take personal responsibility, where there is salvation. And Paris was embarrassed to admit it, but that was what he saw in Africa. Even if you go to England, uh, John Wycliffe in Oxford, where you studied, he was burnt at the stake. Why? Because he translated the Bible so that each and every person could understand it. Later on, if you think when Bloody Mary reigned, how Latimer, Cranmer and Ridley were burnt at the stake as well for their faith and belief in the Bible as the word of God. I want to finish and um, invite my skeptical friends to rethink Christianity. And maybe you went to a public school where you only experienced a religion of high church, of incredibly aloof um, 
pallet gospel preaching without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to invite you, my friend, to go and explore the foundations of Christianity. Um, I can recommend Christianity Explore. That's a course that takes you through the gospel. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord have mercy on England. Goodbye.